The meeting is called to order this town council public meeting September 6, 2022. We start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Robert Kernahan? Here. John Foreman? Present. Julia Farah? Here. Ralph Miller? Present. Colleen Sheehan? Present. Richard Sharp? Here. Randy Neumeyer? Present. I am present. Chris Gladys? Present. David Austin? Present. We have a quorum. We start this evening with uh, a couple of proclamations. We have the uh, Proclamation for Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. September of 2022. Mr. Sharp, if you would read it, please, for the record. Whereas childhood cancer is the number one disease-related killer of kids and teenagers, one in five children diagnosed with cancer will die within five years of diagnosis. In addition, one in 250 American children will be diagnosed with cancer before the age of 20. Cancer alone represents nearly half of the top seven causes of death by disease in children aged 0 through 19 years. The average age of death for a child with cancer is nine, causing a child to lose 70 years of expected life. And, whereas childhood cancer is on the rise, with an estimated 17,293 children diagnosed every year in the United States alone, childhood cancers and adult cancers are different. Yet we continue to use the downsized adult cancer protocols on kids with many times devastating effects. The lack of childhood cancer research has tremendous impact on kids and significant cost to society. And, whereas 1,290 children aged 0 through 14 and 540 adolescents aged 15 through 19 are expected to die from cancer in 2022, and whereas the overall incidence of childhood cancer is on the increase, averaging 0.8% increase per year since 1975. And whereas children who survived the five years after cancer diagnosis experience a 15-fold increased risk of developing congestive heart failure and seven-fold higher risk of premature death due to cardiac causes. Survivors are also at increased risk for recurrence of the original cancer or a secondary cancer. More than 95% of childhood cancer survivors will have significant health issues Issued, issues by the time they are 45 years of age. These health-related issues are side effects from either the cancer or more commonly the result of its treatment. One third will suffer severe and chronic side effects. One third will suffer moderate to severe health problems. And one third will suffer slight moderate side effects. And whereas the five-year survival rate for PIPG remains almost zero percent. The median survival for a child diagnosed with DIPG is 8 to 11 months, and whereas, whereas the financial toll for a childhood cancer diagnosis and treatment can take one family is devastating. The average cost associated with childhood cancer for a single child is $833,000 in medical costs and lost parental wages. And Whereas many adult cancers can be diagnosed early, yet in 80% of kids, cancer has already spread to other areas of the body by the time it is diagnosed. And whereas it is now understood by the scientific and research community that hazard exposures in the environment are powerful causes of cancer in children, and such exposures can be reduced to or eliminated to decrease the rising number of children diagnosed with cancer. And whereas, despite these facts, childhood cancer research is vastly and consistently underfunded. A total of a total of 34 drugs have been approved by the FDA for use in the treatment of childhood cancers. 28 of these drugs were approved in the first instance for use in cancer treatment for children. And now, therefore, let it be known that on the sixth day of September, 2022, the Town Council of the Town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, does hereby proclaim September as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. 
Thank you, Rick. Our next proclamation. Next proclamation. I'll go ahead and read this one. This was uh, a gentleman from West Creek Township is a member of the uh, AS AFSP.org suicide prevention uh, group. He's also a group called Stop. He does a lot of work locally on uh, suicide prevention. His name is Jim Kazmiersik. And uh, Jim couldn't be with us tonight, but he brought by a lot of materials which you see over on that table, so please feel free to uh, stop by and pick up some of those. I think it's important for everyone to be aware of this. It affects more families than what you think. My first cousin that I grew up with committed suicide about 14 years ago. Uh, so it's touch, it touches everybody. Nobody can really say they go through life without knowing someone that's taking their own life. So along with being Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, this is also Suicide Prevention Month. Proclamation is, whereas September is recognized as Suicide Prevention Month, a time when millions of people around the world join together to raise awareness of suicide prevention, treatment, and promote recovery. And whereas this is a time that is dedicated to bringing awareness to the role everyone in the community can play in preventing suicide and to encouraging all community members to recognize the signs, find the words, and reach out to someone they are concerned about. And whereas the theme for 2022 Suicide Prevention Month is creating hope through action. And whereas the stigma associated with suicide and mental illness can discourage those at risk for suicide from seeking the help and life-saving measures. And whereas education about the warning signs of suicide, the value of preventative measures, and the support means needed are essential to are essential to successful prevention of suicide and whereas the town of Cedar Lake is invested in not only the health and welfare of its residents but also the mental health and welfare of its residents. And whereas September 10th of every year is World Suicide Prevention Day and whereas approximately 703,000 people die by suicide each year and 77% of those suicides being low and middle income uh, countries and whereas raising awareness can reduce the stigma and encourage well-informed action to reduce instances of suicide around the world and here in the town of Cedar Lake and whereas we encourage all residents, government agencies, private businesses, nonprofit organizations, the media and other interested groups in our community to increase awareness of what we can do to support the prevention of suicide attempts and encourage those in need of help. Now therefore, let it be known that on this sixth day of, this, of September 2022, the Town Council of the Town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana does hereby proclaim September 2022 as Suicide Prevention Month. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have, we'll go to something positive. Uh, are, we, are we going to make a motion for us to sign the I don't think we really need to make a motion. It's just our signatures are on the last page. Are you going to vote no? No. Oh. We're just silent. Okay. Yeah. Proclamation. Yeah. 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 We'll go to oath of office. Fire department. Jason Dieta. 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 Part time paramedic. So before you tonight is Mr. Vieta, uh, applying for a part-time paramedic. Mr. Vieta comes with over 20 years experience in EMS, currently works full-time with Superior EMS out of Maryville. We'd be glad to have him. Awesome. Yeah. Raise your right hand and please repeat after me. I, Jason Vieta, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully support the Constitution of the United States of America, Constitution and laws of the state of Indiana, the ordinances of the town of Cedar Lake, 
filed with Cedar Lake. And the rules and regulations of the Cedar Lake Fire Department. The rules and regulations of the Cedar Lake Fire Department. And that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Mm -hmm. Impartially. And honestly discharge. And honestly discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As a part-time paramedic. As a part-time paramedic. To which I have been appointed. To which I have been appointed. According to the law. According to the law. And to the best of my skills and ability. And the best of my skills and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Jason, thank you for uh, joining our team. Thanks for the opportunity. We are we're lucky to have so many talented people serving our community. Bob wants to shake his hand. Thank God there's still people that answer answer the 911 calls, you know, and show up when we need them, so appreciate it. Okay, we have public comment on agenda items. Second call, public comment on agenda items. Third call for public comment on agenda items. Anything online? Okay, none seen. Consent agenda. We are going to exclude the minutes because they are not prepared for the August 16, 2022 meeting. Uh, claims all town funds $587,776.02. Wastewater operating $745,899.82. Water utility $144,365.71. Stormwater $17,000. $454.44. In payroll for 818 and 91 of 2022 of $565,382.87. Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda as listed? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Motion by Ms. Sheevan. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Miller. Questions or discussion? Yes. Uh, I asked Jen, and uh, Jen said I need to uh, ask Tim. We spent almost three thousand dollars on uh, Dave Cole uh, at the clubhouse. What did we do to that air conditioning unit there? The blower motor got uh, power surge and shorted out the furnace. So we're working on an insurance claim for that money. So. Um, and we also got a, and Cliff's recommendation ordered a phase protector that would stop that from action happening in the future, which I think they put on today. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Sheevan? Yes. Richard Church? Yes. Randy Niemeyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Ordinances and resolutions. Item one is Ordinance 1423, Town of Cedar Lake, Ward Redistricting. The public hearing was held on 8-16 of 2022. This reading of the ordinance would be an adoptive reading. Mr. Sharp, by his title, please. An ordinance amending town ordinance number 1168, being an ordinance amending town ordinance number 834, being an ordinance ratifying town ordinance number 810, being an ordinance amending the town code pertaining to the legal descriptions of ward boundary districts in the town of Cedar Lake and repealing all town code sections and sections or parts thereof in conflict herewith. And repealing all town code sections and ordinance or parts thereof in conflict herewith. Repealing all town code sections and ordinances or parts thereof in conflict herewith and all matters related thereto. And repealing all town code sections and ordinances or parts thereof in conflict herewith and all matters related thereto. Thank you. You've heard the adoptive reading of Ordinance 1423. Uh, Mr. Salatis, comments, please. Appropriate notice has been given to the county. This is ready for adoption. Thank you. Mr. Austin, any other comments? That's the uh, report I have also. Legal descriptions in order of the boundaries. 
they are. Those legal descriptions were prepared by your engineering consultant at East Engineering, reviewed and verified with those professionals, and inserted appropriately into the ordinance as directed. Thank you. I'll consider a motion to adopt Ordinance 1423. I make a motion to adopt Ordinance Number 1423. Thank you. Motion made by Mr. Sharp. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Rivera. Questions or discussion on the motion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Chewin? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Neymar? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. And if you want to see the zoning or, or the new ward maps, um, this whole packet of information that we have in front of us can be downloaded on our website. So you just go to that and you can see the ward maps. We will also now forward this adopted ordinance onto the county as we are supposed to. This does not change your voting precincts that you vote in. Those are maps that are drawn by the county. This is only for ward representation on the town council. Currently, the entire council is elected at large, and that does not change, but the wards were redrawn to meet the provisions of the state statute. Every 10 years, this is an exercise we have to go through. Uh, next is Ordinance 1426, Town of Cedar Lake, 40 acre parcel annexation. First reading was on 7 5 2022. Public hearing was held uh, 8 16 of 2022. So this would be an adoptive reading as well. Correct? It is. Okay. A reading by its title only, please, Mr. Sharp. Ordinance number 1426, an ordinance annexing certain contiguous land to the town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, and all matters related thereto. Thank you. Mr. Austin Kyle. This is the 40 parcel that was the subject of. The exchange transaction with the developer owning the adjacent 40 acre parcel. That 40 acre parcel was within the corporate boundaries. This 40 acre parcel was not, so we needed this 40 acre parcel in part for the some components of the lake ecosystem restoration project and hence your justification for the swap exchange and now the need for the propriety of town owned property being within the municipal corporate boundaries. That's what this accomplishes. Thank you. And for any of you in the public that have driven south on Parish, you can see the uh, dewatering facility in full swing. So it's all happening. Okay, thank you. Uh, ordinance 1426, adoptive reading. Is there a motion to adopt? I'll make a motion to adopt 1426. Motion by Ms. Sheevan. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Rivera. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. <coughs> Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Chivas? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Neymar? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. BZA and Plan Commission. Item 1 is BZA Petition 2022 36. Bowner. 8611 West 138th Place, use variance of use to allow the operation of a hair salon in an R2 zoning district. This received a favorable recommendation for BZA meeting on August 11, 2022. Uh, I watched that BZA meeting and uh, the comment was made there that these are the most honest petitioners in the history of Cedar Lake. And uh, I'm going to second that. They were very forthcoming and willing to. Uh, be out front with everybody, so thanks for that. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, any other comments, Chris or Bob? Um, I, I wrote down, but I you're going to operate six days a week, right? Correct. From so. 9 to 8. Oh, well, no more than six days a week. Okay, but it's yeah. from 9 to 8? Correct. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. I've got pictures here. And uh, they're going to pull in, they're going to go to the back door, and uh, she'll only do one client at a time, so we won't have a bunch of cars out there. If she could do two clients at a time, at the same time, <laughs> one with the right hand and left hand, I'd like to see that. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Edward Scissorhands? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Edward Scissorhands, yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, is there a motion by the council based on the favorable recommendation and the conditions imposed by the BZA? So moved.
Motion to approve, Bob? Yes. Thank you. We have motions there a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Sheba. Discussion? Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Vera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Sheba? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Neymar? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Congratulations. Good Thank luck. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. question as well. How long do we have to like get it up and running? Is there like a timeline as far as that goes? Six months. Yeah, okay. There's your answer. Six months. Alright, thank you. So I pull the right permits. Yeah, because we'll have to like get, you know, change some stuff and order and if you don't build the build out this is a potential, then she would have to apply for a variance after six months if she doesn't open? Technically, yes. Yep. Unless she comes in and asks for Final an extension, extension of time. An extension? So you can do that. Yeah, if you get delayed, just be on top of it. Come in and ask right. for an extension. And most likely you'll be looked at favorably. Yeah. It's usually bad when people come in 18 months after and then ask for an extension. Right. Yeah, we can't yeah. help you with that. <laughs> awesome. Thank so, you. Well, thank you guys and good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next we have release of performance surety for People's Bank project in the amount of $14,000. This was accepted by the Town Council on March 15, 2022. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Mr. Carney. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Rivera. Discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julie Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Cheban? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Neymar? Yes, motion carries 7-0. Item 3 is acceptance of MacArthur Elementary School letter of credit, the amount of $312,389. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make the motion to approve. Thank you. Motion by Ms. Sheba. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sharp. Discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julie Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Cheban? Yes. Richard Chark? Yes. Randy Neumeyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. New business item 1 public safety facility. Topo survey. <coughs> Kroll Appen Marsh in the amount of $5,200, Mr. Slotis. Uh, David Rainey from Meredith Group solicited three quotes. Uh, Kroll Appen Marsh, we just call Appen Marsh, uh, was the lowest. Um, most responsive and can complete the work in the most timely fashion. Uh, we recommend going with that in March. This is just for topographical survey, correct? Uh, topographical and boundary. Thank you. It's for the public safety building. There are motion by the council to approve. So moved. Motion by Mr. Sharp, second. second. Second by Mr. Carnahan. Discussion. Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julie Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Cheevan? Yes. <coughs> Richard Chark? Yes. Randy Neumeyer? Yes, motion carries 7 0. Item 2 is public safety facility scoping agreement, GM development for the BOT. Mr. Slotis. This is the draft scoping agreement, but the GM development, I believe Dave is still going through a review. Um, and he can speak towards that. But this is the agreement that gets us through uh, what we're calling the scoping phase, where we um, work with the BOT operator to um, estimate what the <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Um, maximum price would be for that project. Uh, so this gets us to the point of where we will then execute an actual contract with the BOT developer once we have that guaranteed maximum price. So this is a, basically a bridge agreement uh, that with no cost to the town. And then once that price is established is when we'll start to establish the financing and the formal component agreement. of it, correct? That's correct. Got it. Mr. Austin, any comments? Yes. Um, <clears throat> with regard to the draft scoping agreement, there are a number of items that uh, need a little bit of fine tuning and clarity. Chris and I have talked about that. We'll be reviewing those together this week. Any action you take tonight should be contingent upon completion of that uh, fine tuning, if you will, and recommendation for signature process. Thank you. Set motion by the council to approve the public safety facility scoping agreement with GM development for BOT with the contingency of completion of legal and administrative review. I'll make the motion. Thank you. I'll second the motion made by Ms. Sheevan, seconded by Mr. Sharp. Discussion? 
Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. John Foreman? I, I did have one point to make. It, I'm glad that we're doing the topo survey in this public um, scoping agreement, but I think with the economy doing what it's doing and, and everything, we need to just uh, walk with caution and make sure we're spot on with our financial advisors. So I, I will go along with this, but yes, Julia Vera? Yes. Yeah. One second. Continue, Jen. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Sheevan? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Newmark? Yes. Motion carry 7 0. Mr. Austin? I'm sorry to interrupt. With regard to John's uh, comment, sure. Uh, Chris and I have been talking with, and him more than me, but we have been talking with financial bean counters and bond council. They've all been part of that financial working group component of this project. Uh, particularly important since there's $11,900,000 of planned budget for this project if that occur. So please know that uh, that's happened, that is happening, and it will continue to and through as we watch uh, what the economy does, what the interest rates are, and what the methods can be most beneficial to Cedar Lake residents. Yeah, I, I agree with your comments too, John, and, and I also agree with Dave that there has our financial team has been diligent through this process and looking at market conditions that you are citing. The longer you wait on something like this, the more the chance there is also for double-digit interest rates if we get into a stagflation Good period. So there's due diligence being done all along, and people are keeping their eye on the ball. So. Nothing will be done irresponsibly that the town can't afford to pay, even in the worst case scenario. But, uh, item three is approval for police department's new hire, Brandon Holsauer. This received a favorable recommendation from the Board of Safety on S September 2nd, 2022. Chief Fisher. Uh, Council, uh, Brandon is in the audience with us. He comes to us uh, with seven years experience in law enforcement certified. Uh, so we'll just have to put him through the FTO process, but he's a replacement for a missing officer. So um, we'll be back up to full staff. Where is he uh, currently or coming from? East Chicago. Thank you, sir. You're not from uh, the Kokomo area, are you? No. Hill? Graduate no. from Crown Point. Graduate from Crown Point. Uh, Crown Point. Thank you. We have a recommendation from the Board of Safety. I have one more question for the Chief. Uh, once he's put into service, he's not going to have to go through any training. He can go on the road immediately? He will go through a field training on the road, but that's it. He's already Academy certified, so okay. uh, most, of his, just most of his training... Town, right? One more time, sir? Just basically get him used to the town. Used to the town and the way we do things. Um, most of his training will... Um, be just our normal day-to-day -day operations, how we uh, take reports, how we get them corrected, how we do those things. Um, as far as being certified, he's already got quite a few certifications already, so. Okay. Good job. Right. Yeah, I like the size of this one, though. <laughs> 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 he, is, uh, he is being responsible to do your, Not as tall as my your, brother. Your, uh, the guy I want to call. Yeah. He's being respectful to his current uh, and giving him two weeks notice, so uh, he'll actually start on the 18th. Um, as official, uh, he'll, he'll start work on the 19th and be officially sworn in at your next council. Awesome. Look forward to it. Yep. Is there a motion by the council to approve the so moved. Thank you. Mr. Carnian, second by Mr. Foreman. Discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnian? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julie Vera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Cheevan? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Newman? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Look for the next meeting. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fire Department's new hire, Jason Beda, just received a favorable recommendation from the Board of Safety on August 24, 2022. Oh, well, we already swore him in, so. <laughs> 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 Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Foreman. There's a second. Second. Second by Mr. Sharp. Discussion. Well, that was an interesting way to go about it. <laughs> First time ever, though, Randy. First time. 
Yeah, I won't say that. <laughs> Any other discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan. Yes. John Foreman. Yes. Julia Rivera. Yes. Ralph Miller. Yes. Colleen Cheevan. Yes. Richard Chark. Yes. Randy Neumeyer. Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Well, congratulations again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're not used to hearing all this clapping, we leave booze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, item five is approval for disposal of old crane truck on GovDeals.com. Mr. Kubiak. Yep, uh, after we did locate and purchase a new crane truck, um, we were just ready, we got, we're getting bids to put in an order, and we did one last search and actually found one in Maxson, Illinois, 25 minutes away, which is wow. unbelievable. Wow. And it was about thirty thousand dollars cheaper than what we were going about to order, so uh, ended up working out well. Uh, we we looked at the one that we currently have, and the, the crane being uncertifiable, and the truck just kind of one of those things to get rid of. It's not worth putting a lot of money into to keep it. Doesn't have a useful purpose for us, so we figured we'll just uh, get rid of it and use it for some equipment or something. So. Okay, the new crane truck has already made its debut in the old Labor Day Parade. And I saw it on the parade. Fancy new equipment. Yeah. Wow, well, nice. Road. We yeah, were testing the crane during the parade. <laughs> were they? <laughs> Lifting up all of Lowell's manhole covers. <laughs> <laughs> part of the plan or what? It made the parade go <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion by the council to approve? So moved. Motion by Mr. Carnan, is there a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Rivera. Discussion. Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colin Stevens? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Neumeyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Item 6 is the CBBEL pay request 1 in the amount of $236,528.01 for Stage 1 sediment dewatering facility, Mr. Slot. <coughs> Uh, so, as you noted previously, there's been significant progress at the sediment dewatering facility, and as such, uh, they want to get paid for that work. Uh, so, this is pay request for Everybody's got their hand up. <laughs> the motion by the council to approve. So motion moved. to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Sharp, second by Mr. Foreman. Discussion. Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Cheevan? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Meyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Item 7, CBBEL pay request 2 in the amount of $699,884.93 for Parish Avenue improvements, Mr. Slotis. Uh, so, likewise, uh, Milestone has been has done a significant amount of work on Parish. I just walked it earlier uh, today with TJ, our engineer, um, looking really good, um, coming together nicely, and um, they want to get paid for their work. Hmm. I think they're paid <laughs> next week, is what it sounded like this morning. Yeah, they still have that section from tracks to the intersection to do that. And that will just be a mill and over. Yeah, uh, we're not digging up and putting yeah. And uh, these amounts here of uh, one one million one hundred thirty-six thousand eight hundred thirty-one dollars and ten cents. Uh, that's what they completed, or that's the I believe the estimated total cost. Okay, so we're pay we're going to pay them what this? Yes. Okay. Six hundred and ninety-nine thousand six hundred eighty-four dollars and ninety-two cents. Or eight hundred. Eight hundred. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there a motion by the council to approve? I'll make the motion to approve. Motion second. by Ms. Sheevan, second by Ms. Carnahan. Discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Sheevan? Yes. Richard Short? Yes. Randy Niemeyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. <coughs> the projects will end soon. Yes. We're getting there. Yes, sir. Yes. Then it won't be a 15 mile trip for me to distract you. Yeah. <laughs> you can get a lot of people. Find another A lot of around. people don't understand. When you get a community crossroad grant, you got to get after it. You get after it, you get after it, and then you're at the mercy of Milestone or whoever yep. wins the contract. Yep. So, unfortunately, the four days of misery for the school opening was what it was, and uh, we can't open Paris soon enough. We all know that. So, this turning right. around is getting old. And it's cost us a lot more money than what we anticipated because of the extra amount of stolen stuff they had to put in there. 
Yeah. And I appreciate the police department doing what they're doing to keep people off. They even pulled me over on it, so I appreciate that. <laughs> and we don't distinguish. And the officer didn't know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did he pull up uh, uh, something like the speaker's husband did? <laughs> <laughs> Saturday morning on a motorcycle. Well, he, he thought I was having fun going through there. Oh, you were. <laughs> uh, next is CBBEL pay uh, app number three in the amount of $91,729.89 for the Highland subdivision improvements. Same thing. Uh, this is coming to a close. Pa uh, final paving will be done as weather permits. In another old neighborhood checked off the list. Yeah. So this is good. Motion to approve. So moved. Motion by Mr. Carney. Second. I'll second. Second by Ms. Rivera. Discussion. Yeah, the discussion is that neighborhood. Well, skinny roads, it's professionally done. It's unbelievable. Very well. To see that happen in that area is. Well, this year they have parish rebuilt for a million. For a million. Yeah. Now the subdivision, a lot of stuff happens. And and that road up there we thought was covered with the first phase of the project we did, and we discovered it wasn't. And Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julie Rivera? Yes. Rose Miller? Yes. Colleen Sheba? Yes. Richard Turk? Yes. Randy Ewan? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. <laughs> Item 9 is accepted for <coughs> permanent stormwater drainage easement for Havenwood Lot 211. Mr. Salata. So this is the second of three easements we need for a, a stormwater project in the Havenwood area. <coughs> um, we ask for accepting of the easement. Very good. Is there a motion by the council to approve? Motion so, to approve. Thank you. Motion second. by Ms. Sheep and second by Mr. Carnahan. Discussion. Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Stevens? Yes. Richard Turk? Yes. Randy Neymar? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Report to town council. Mr. Carnahan. Uh, well, I, I attended Saturday night's conference or concert down here at the town grounds and uh, there was 162 people. Ralph was here also. Mm -hmm. I saw him. I don't know if any of the rest of you were here. 162. Did you count? No. That's, oh. They told me how many there was there. Oh, okay. They counted. And they said they, had three, going around. they said they had 300 the last time, so 162 this time. And then I attended uh, Colleen's uh, Labor Day uh, Fest. I was down here from 2 to 5.30. And uh, then I was in the Low Labor Day Parade with uh, UAW. And uh, then I would also like to commend Chief Fisher on uh, appointing an uh, officer to be in charge of training, you know, let him probably talk a little bit more about that. Don't want to take any of your thunder away. Oh, no. Go right ahead, sir. Thank you, Bob. Any other council reports? I have one, an email that was sent to council members and police department personnel about a basketball group in uh, Rose Garden Estates. Um, I saw in the email the commentary was that since the town doesn't have an ordinance against basketball games in the road that we can't enforce anything. I was thinking out of context in the conversation. Yeah. So the, the conversation was uh, was here in the town hall last week with individuals and they asked more than one question Okay. and some of the issues that they were complaining about were had to do with whether or not the, the portion of Rose Garden had actually been turned over to the town yet for enforceable ordinance violations. Um, the other issue was the basketball goal. Um, I have pictures of the basketball goal. It's at a dead end. Um, I have an officer that lives right down the road from there. It says there's absolutely no problems in that area other than a few individuals that dislike the kids playing basketball down there. Um, there's no cars that park down there. Um, the basketball goal is in the roadway. It's not blocking any traffic or any movement because the roadway's a dead end and we saw no issue with them playing basketball down there. So what ordinances were you talking about then, since this is taken out of context? Uh, I wasn't in the conversation when they were here last week. I talked to my patrol commander and my deputy chief that talked to them. And he went out there and looked at the property and didn't see any problems with what was going on. So it seems to me that every time there's something that goes on in the neighborhood, it's always 
well, the town council needs to adopt an ordinance. Well, if there's obstruction in the roadway, that's a simple one, but it's not obstructing the roadway, though, you know. But it's still a item. I mean, it's still an item in the roadway. I sure. Think. I mean, we can rem we can remove the basketball goal, but I think that's I think that's removing a basketball goal that's actually letting kids play basketball right now. So is it owned by a resident? That yeah. Has, and yeah, the like people that live right next to it. So it's like in the street. It's sitting on the edge yeah, of the road. Really I can show you a picture of it if you'd like to see it. I'm not opposed to basketball goal, but what I, I guess that seems like selective enforcement. Selective enforcement? Right. It's something that's in the road. It's not a dedicated park. What stops people from doing that? So would you rather us remove the basketball goal from the roadway? It's not about me. Be rather, it's not about my opinion as much as it is about what is the law. Okay. Yeah. Well, is it our road yet? It doesn't matter. It's still a road. Right. It's like if no, it's not our. But road. we don't plow roads. It's not our road. Until plowing is just a road. Road. Until we eighty percent of the subdivisions built out, then we accept the roads. Plowing so is different than long. It, it is a road. People are driving on it. I get that. It's so is it our jurisdiction, or is it the is it the folks in the? Does the Rose Garden have a police force? They do not. Okay. Then I I would suppose it would be in our jurisdiction. I mean, we're the local police. I believe can enforce local, state, and federal laws that are on the books. I don't think state laws allows for basketball goals and road right away. Yeah, I was going to bring this subject up too because I saw this. I mean, I, I like seeing kids play basketball. We all played yeah. basketball growing up. Thank you, but it is what it is. But I have to see him not be able to play basketball. Is that the end of it? That that road that has zero cars on. Again, I just no. think that we're we're satisfying the few for the many. There's a bunch of kids playing that are not causing havoc and enjoying themselves. I have actually asked the officer who lives down the road and I said, "Is there a problem there? Are you having a lot of damage?" He's like, "No, they're actually playing little tournaments together. It's actually kind of cute." Well, did you I, see the email from Pixie Hollow? I did. I got it late in the afternoon, yes. So that's when I sent the officer over there. I didn't know what they were referring to. I didn't know that she had come uh, had come in last week at all when I was on in training. So, Does Rose Garden Estates have a park? They do, yeah, but they I don't do, think they have a basketball goal, do they? I don't think anything's finished over there. No, it's not <coughs> finished. Yeah, there's a kid's park that's like being finished. built as we right now. It's still not open, but it's... Uh, they're building do, they, do they have an HOA? Yeah. Yeah. Would it would it not be better for the HOA to engage in maybe putting a basketball goal up at this park? Which is what which was what was advised by my officers. Maybe you should reach out to your HOA to have a better spot for them to play. I I, 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 I would rather see the kids playing basketball than out there getting in mischief. I agree, but we either have laws that we enforce or we don't. It's all set up like I said. Well, I would have to, I would have to disagree. All set up that a grill in the middle of 133rd in the middle lane if there's nobody. But that's not the there. same as what we're referring to here. You're no, talking about putting in something in the middle of the road that will block traffic and something that's on the side of the road that's not blocking traffic. I because nobody it. can drive through there. I get it, but it, it still allows. So we're not selective enforcing it. There's no violation in my eyes because it's not blocking traffic. So now violations are opinions? And that's well, a lot of Indiana Code's opinion based, right? <laughs> now that I'm aware of. It, you get a warning ticket instead of a regular ticket. It's an officer's that's discretion. An officer's discretion. Right, that's right. the discretion part of it. Sure. It's either a warning or a ticket. Sure. It's interpretation, right? Not interpretation of whether or not it's a law, interpretation of whether to give a warning or a ticket. Oh, I'm not, I agree with that. But I'm, I'm re interpreting that that's not blocking the road. If you want us to remove it, sir, we'll remove it. I, it's not about me wanting anything, Bill. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I don't think it's a council. I don't think that it's a violation, and neither did my officer. Every damn time there's there's a problem out there. It's well, the council needs to do this or that with an ordinance. No, we, I'm not asking. We you don't have to adopt an, or, an ordinance against armed robbery. But I'm right? not asking you to put an ordinance, ordinance in, sir. We're, we didn't think it was a violation, and we thought that it was would do more harm than it would good to remove the basketball. 
How does it do more harm to at least Because people kids want? are playing basketball in a dead end run that's not being used for anything else. Are there driveways in the neighborhood? Not right there, from my understanding. I got a picture of it if you'd like to see it. And I mean, there's a the the field at the end. They have nothing over there. Dave, what's your opinion on this? I was afraid you were going to do that. Huh? I was afraid of that. Well, you're, you're the legal guy. I'm, I'm just looking at this from the standpoint of we either have a law or we don't. There's actually a totality of circumstances <laughs> and some items and aspects of this have been missed. At least, as I've heard the conversation, I appreciate the uh, Chief's passion for his position and the need for the Council to dialogue. Um, and I agree with Colleen that there aren't any amenities yet finished in a way that was contemplated when that project came to the Planning Commission and to the Town Council and sought approval. It'll happen one day hopefully sooner than later hopefully. and when it happens these amenities will be in place but the law is still the law and if a car is driving down the road at 50 miles an hour I'm hoping to God that our police officer seeing it and I think he will she or she will will effect a stop and do the proper law enforcement thing for public safety I also think about the <clears throat> quality of life components of the folks who've made the complaint so far, we haven't talked about that. And the people who've made the complaints have invested a significant amount of money in buying a home in that subdivision community and have an expectation in return for a quality of life return, kind of a return on investment, if you will. So not knowing the details about you know who was out there and what was going on, the hours of the day or night, I've heard this many, many times over the years. Uh, I just uh, suggest to you that, that there is that totality, that there is not, and I read every word, every page and every word of the covenants for those projects out there as those uh, development matters were coming before our planning commission. And the use proposed or use complained of is not within the four corners of those documents. So you have the combination of the uh, law regarding traffic code enforcement and you have the uh, components of an approval, land use approval in the subdivision community that has bound itself together by those uh, re covenants, restrictive covenants. And they're called restrictive covenants for a reason. They're to restrict, not to wipe. That's the agreement of the folks who are buying into that subdivision and carrying on living. I don't know if that answered it. I had it prior, but you sound a lot like a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you introduced my new <laughs> talk. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, I personally, I, it's not an opinion matter for me. I was just curious as to why, you know, that became an ordinance issue of the town council. That kind of stuff gets under my skin when that becomes the finger point of garbage it was not forcing the law. But I think you, you're only taking a portion out of it because he went there and talked to them and as of last week he, they were supposed to remove it from the road and put it in the, at least in the east which probably isn't any better than putting it on the road. Um, we didn't know that it was not removed because we were trying to keep the kids able to play basketball because of the area in which they were in. So that was the intent. We went over there and tried to get them to move it at least so that if there was any traffic issues, they wouldn't be blocked. Well, some so DOAs and HOAs have rules against them. That's fine, right? There's no one who says kids can't play in the road. That's what I'm saying. Then they moved it back. They moved it back. Oh, she said they moved it that night. They did. Okay. Riding a bike on a road and walking on a road is different than installing a basketball No, I'm ball. saying if they put it so in the easement. It's not a permanent fixture either. It's, it's on a roller. It. Pardon? It's not installed. No, no, it's on a roller. And, yeah. and, 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 and there's no driveways on the road. There's nothing on the road. It's a it's a dead end because it eventually will be connected to something new. Right? Sure. Well, you, you, we all may recall I tried to do a uh, Jim Hundley basketball court at the uh, park or the subdivision to the south of there. So yeah. we're having our parks department now can 
readdress the need for that well, or, or not. Courts are a hot t topic of discussion because some people hate them because people are having too much fun. And right. Well, I believe we bust some backboards. One, one of the conversations about yeah, kids yeah, we cursing was, we, we, we were kids and we played basketball, we were cursing at each other too. I didn't, but you might have. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> real altar boy. <laughs> there was no trash talking when you were playing ball, right? right. <laughs> okay. So I just wanted to bring that up in the reports and get a little background on it. Any other council reports? Town Attorney. None. Quick Treasurer. Council, I continue to work on the 23 budget with the town manager and our financial consultants. We'll be meeting with Council Affairs this Friday to go over our draft budget. And then from there, I believe it is September 27th that we schedule uh, work sessions like we've done the last few years to go over the 23 budget. Is Corby going to have, like we did last year, that really nice PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, yes, that was very, that. very good. Yeah. I think it was good the pub, for the public, too, to have that at their fingertips. Yeah, that was definitely part of the discussion, good. being able to have that ready to go. I like that. Anything else? Thanks, Jen. Town manager? I'll just piggyback on that and yeah, we've been meeting with uh, our financial consultants and our employee consult uh, employee financial and house consultants. Um, so hey, at nauseum going through all the budgets. Uh, it seems like every other Friday at the minimum is budget day. Um, so as reported, we'll be having to look forward to that. We had a pre-construction meeting uh, today, Tim and I, um, as well as the county for our CBDG project. Uh, we'll be doing handicap ramps, uh, approximately $50,000 of uh, handicap ramps in the Lindsway area. Um, come to find out from our hired contractor for that project that we're in a national domestic uh, cement shortage. Okay. Um, so it's just, no, the rolling litany of shortages that we have here in yeah. the United States right now is a fun to deal with. I heard that. I wonder if I, I wonder if governments of state and federal nature have learned that you can't shut down the economy and then have it produce. Yeah. If they don't know that, they're going to learn it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the the dread project, as you mentioned, um, as of approximately mid August, we had 40 percent of the vegetation and topsoil stripped from. The site, which I imagine is even more significant now since we have a significant pay request. Um, and then the pipeline path has also been almost nearly completely devegetated. Um, and we're potentially looking at having a, uh, at least portions of the pipeline installed this year. Uh, we're doing a lot of coordination with CSX on getting the slip underneath their area. Found, a, uh, found the hard way a, a fiber line um, oh. from Verizon. Um, so that was fun, and then um, yeah. yeah, just coordinating with the railroads is fun in itself. Uh, but that project is, is moving along nicely, and then Parish Avenue, likewise, we're expecting to be completed here shortly, with you know, weather being consistent and also asphalt being consistent. Hopefully, there's no shortage of that that we're unaware of. Um, I think that covers it's 133rd now done. Yeah, I believe they completed the the finish up. I don't think they quite finished up the thermal, but it's close. Okay. But the patch the repatching is kind of okay. No more milling and redoing it again for the other time. So the town didn't pay for that, that was on the contractor. They're a good contractor, like yeah. you know, and our our engineers did a good job of uh, keeping an eye on it. Oh yeah. And and yeah. four days, I mean they hammered that thing out real quick yeah, so amazing. they did a really good job no, they, they were working with the urgency and purpose and it seems like the new signals in that parish in 133 are functioning properly yeah the, the old ones never ever worked from day one and i completely yelled at and screamed at the prior contractors but they came out and messed around but they so never would you sit there and scream with the lights Early morning job. Yeah. The the other ones never worked coming from the north. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll have nice new sidewalks down there, so it, it, it's gonna be a good road. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Chris. Director of Operations. Yeah. Um, I just have one thing. Uh, we did receive our first uh, part of our insurance claim for the lift station eight that got struck by lightning. We got the electric panel in service rebuilt and turned that into insurance and got it reimbursed for it. So we said to make sure we follow through, but we, we have that going smoothly. So we did receive yep. some, and we got a couple more. Hopefully, we're going to get some more done here shortly and get that thing up and going. Thank you. So I have. Police Department. Um, last week I attended a training class uh, with the FLETI, which is a federal law enforcement training center um, for counterterrorism. We do uh, assess buildings for um, potential threats. Pretty interesting class. Um, it was a beginner's course on it. Uh, I intend on doing some more classes on it um, to look at some of our uh, infrastructure and stuff like that around town, which is pretty nice. Um, and then uh, we received a donation today from if you recall, Captain Andrew Laud, um, his mother came in today and donated uh, money to the police department for a future project. Um, we didn't have anything up front that she wanted, but she wanted to donate to the police department. So um, in the future, when we start a project, we're going to do it in uh, Captain Laud's name. Um, but we'll we'll present that to you when we get to that project. We just don't have one for are in the process of building one right now. So. You want to talk about That's the right. officer for training in that? Sure. Area? So um, we had some turnover in the department and, some, and needed to uh, appoint a new training coordinator. So uh, we did uh, reach out to the department, see who was interested in the position, as it requires a lot of office time and a lot of reporting instructions to the academy and, and ma maintaining officer hours, make sure they stay in, in, uh, certified in the classes that they're trained in. Um, and so uh, after interviews, we selected Sean Meyer um, as the new training coordinator for the department. So we started about two weeks ago. Um, he'll still work as a patrol officer. He still takes his calls. He still does that, but it's an added duty to his responsibility, and he's pretty excited about it. He's uh, hit the ground running with a lot of ideas, so um, we're pretty excited about it. And you need budget money to cover. We do need budget money, Bob. If you could get that for me, I would I really know. appreciate it. I told you I'd try to do what I could. Uh, and since Chief Wilkening's not here, we just take out. Yeah, what are we going to do, Chief? <laughs> and we, oh, that 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 works, Nick? we request yeah. some training, too, as a council. So I know that the Board of Safety has requested training. I <coughs> can't find any classes related to Board of Safety. I looked at AIM, I've looked at everywhere. I've had Jen help me look for them. There's nothing that's specific for border safety training. I don't, unless uh, the attorney knows of any locations, that would be awesome. Because I've tried to get them into some classes, but I think the biggest thing with any boards and commissions is training on what it is you're actually supposed to do. Right. I mean, that's the the biggest part is the updates of state statutes because they're constantly tweaking right. local government. That Title 36 is always on their radar. And so I think that's the biggest thing is to always be updating people on the new changes to statutes as it relates to the governance of those bodies. I do have some uh, resources. Chief and I just haven't talked about it. Okay. We meet next week on the Next week we meet. Next Tuesday. There you go. You're on the calendar. Bring your pad and paper. I've got a pad of paper. <laughs> or an iPad, Bill. I'll bring it to work, too. Yep. Fire Department. Uh, Log family also donated money to the Firefighters Association. Um, and Chief apologizes that he's ill tonight and he'll be back to work tomorrow. So I don't have a report for you tonight. Okay. Awesome. Or are you requesting us to take from the police budget? For the <laughs> <laughs> I already got it. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> yeah, uh, tip up the old block. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I I love the ride for it. Rick Communication, uh, I received a certified mailing that was in my mailbox here at Town Hall from the Department of the Army Corps of Engineers, Chicago District. This letter is uh, stating the uh, termination of the uh, original project that was started in 2004, a partnership with the Army Corps, uh, since we have taken this project on locally. This was just an official close to the business relationship. So that's what this letter is. It looks like a new colonel. Yeah. Another new colonel. Another new colonel. So we appreciate the, the letter and acknowledgement that uh, we have all moved on. So 
Chief Fisher, you I have, have one, more one, thing. one new thing. Uh, our school um, has applied for and was awarded a new grant for another SRO within the school to be uh, funded by the school. Hanover. Um, Hanover, yep. Yeah. So we will be approaching um, the, the town to uh, enter in an, an additional MOU uh, with the, the school like we have in the past. Um, to put another officer in the school. As most of you know, that's pretty much the way that it's going in every community. They put an officer in the school for the year, um, which will allow us to, as in the past, uh, put another officer on the road. So. Great. Okay. okay. Public comment. Second call for public comment. Third call. Anything I'd like to our next town council public meeting will be Tuesday, September 21st at 2022 at 7 p.m., which is preceded by a utility board meeting at 6.30. Uh, please, I've got bracelets here for Suicide Prevention Month also, so pick them. The utility board executive session in two weeks will be... Okay. Uh,